I don't think I've ever God seen damn. New Jack City. I've oh, been feening man. over a steak all week for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Kind of weird like that. What are you gonna I do? Feel, I feel like I'm in Ranger School right now. Like, let's just talk about food the whole time. <laughs> Get your little notebook with like Idiot. Nutella and donuts and <laughs> what were we doing the other week? Sound absolutely terrible. Oh, yeah. Like one week post Ranger School. I, we were we were talking about macadamia cookies and strawberry jam the last time you were out here, Jordan, and we made that shit happen. Like it was <laughs> right then and there. Like, oh yeah, just make a cookie with a little bit of strawberry homemade strawberry jam in the middle of it. That, that was some. Then I put a raspberry Danish on top of a macadamia nut cookie. We had been out. We were out in the woods for like a I don't whole know, day, two and a half hours. I was starving. Okay, you guys know we're live, right? We are live. Whoops. We're always live, man. Just bet on it. Yeah. <laughs> We're always live. The NSA is always watching and recording. I mean, look, yeah. we, are, we are half an hour early right now, and there are bodies stacking up out there. Let's go, fellas. Stack them up. Obi, good to see you, man. Great time down there. We're going to cover it. Hey, boys. Hey, Dr. Nick. All right. This is a bit of an admin thing real quick, though. But did we figure out how to, like, do the comments without changing yeah. our pictures? So I'm, I'm working on uh, learning uh, OB right now. So we're probably going to switch platforms at some point, And it's going <laughs> to level up the game a little bit. But I'll tell you what, uh, for, <clears throat> for co-producers, we're going to have to have some training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot. I'm pretty sure we fired the last last week's guy. Did you really? And it was that bad, huh? He was awful. You know. <laughs> he really had the bad. wrong background on. Jordan was producing the show last week. He's giving himself shit right now. Yeah. yeah. Good. That fucker. Hey, we made it through to the end. Um they didn't really, it, like, you don't make it sound like we had to tolerate it. That was actually a good conversation. I thought it was great, man. <laughs> I mean, didn't we do the intro? We played the intro video twice, right? No, that was Breedlove. That was Breedlove. Oh, right. Was Breed Love. Yeah, yeah we played it. Late. He didn't show up on time because he was fucking late. That's right. And what, uh, what a guy. We played it like on the on the money at seven, and then like after a couple of minutes, I was like, let's, let's play it again. You need to see this. I like it. Yeah. I I will say, man, that our conversation with Brian Dement last week was pretty awesome. Uh, it yeah. was a good one. Yeah, he he took it to another level that uh, it, it was pretty cool. I was digging it. I'm in, I'm enjoying like this kind of accidental, well, maybe not accidental, kind of accidental brand that we've like made for ourselves. We're almost like the uh, like the um, I want to say dive bar, but that's not like good enough. <laughs> like every like everybody everybody comes to us and they're they're comfortable with just being themselves and talking about whatever they want, uh, like particularly the c word. Those like, guys don't care if their channel gets ripped off YouTube, so just say whatever you like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's we're pretty cool when we're like, hey, tell tell us an embarrassing story about yourself. And it's like they forget they're on camera being recorded. It's like, I feel like a <laughs> seer instructor. Tell me something embarrassing. Oh, my God, this <laughs> idiot's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't exploit that at all. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> for, for the rest of the time, you're under our control. Oh man! Well, did anybody, Patrick, did anybody tell you about story time? What we're gonna make you do on here? No, no. Maybe <laughs> we'll to just maybe do when, live, man. Someday. Maybe when we yeah. have a lot, like an actual, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that. Uh, yeah. Let's 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 wait for story time until uh, Patrick comes back on for the full hour and a half. Uh, we got Don Bay coming on later tonight, but. Uh, Maybe maybe a good time. We got uh, it's a little bit after six thirty. I think uh, you know crowds falling in. We got about forty people. You know, way way early. That's amazing. Go out there if you're out here now. Go share it. Share it now. Yeah. Do all the things. Likes and yeah. subscribes and smash. and smash smash it right. Like uh, that's it. Um, we've got uh, Patrick Montgomery here from the uh, KC Cattle Company. He is the founder. Uh, he is, uh, we, we had some interesting talks. Uh, I know Jordan has been talking with you guys a little bit more. I'm glad you're still around. Um, and, and, and because of, because of Jordan and everything, but I think you guys got <laughs> the same language. Uh, Patrick's the 175th guy, right? Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Patrick, I could ask you, you're right here. <laughs> yeah. um, Either way, man. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, KC cattle company, or at least tell our audience about it and, uh, what you guys have got going on now. 
Yeah, man. So got out of the military in 2014, went back to school um, to become a large animal vet and figured out you don't make any money as a large animal vet and you pay like $150,000 to go to school. And I just couldn't make that math pencil, but I did love like the aspects of being a large animal vet. I love the medicine. I love the uh, being around cattle and horses and like this, this whole lifestyle. Um, and so when I kind of buried that dream, I had told my wife, I was like, look, um, I will, I need you to be the, the provider for me while I'm going to school here. And then like, you know, be my sugar mama. And after we get done with that, I'll go pay the bills. And so, you know, after I buried this dream of being a vet, uh, I went and did like some corporate America job interviews. And one of them was a, a, a really big company here in Kansas city. Awesome benefits, great starting salary. Uh, it was like, you know, kind of on my, my last career, it was a security consulting position, mostly like Ocona stuff out of country. And, uh, you know, the, the last question they asked me in the interview was, um, and it was a panel interview and they asked me, you know, uh, what questions do you have for us? And my question back was, I don't understand the job position. What do you guys actually do? Like, what are, what are you spending the majority of your days doing? And they kind of looked at each other like, man, nobody's ever asked us that. And they, you know, the response from the the manager was, uh, we spend our days convincing corporate we're worth the money they, they pay us. And, you know, the air just like deflated out of my lungs. And like, I, you know, I'm driving back to uh, Columbia from Kansas city and it's about a two hour drive. And, I call my wife and I'm like, I can't do this. Like I just, I hung up my uniform and like a job that I absolutely loved and, you know, something that provided purpose and, you know, the pay was terrible. It was incredibly dangerous, but I loved it. And I was with my brothers and like, you know, I think that's the part that, that a lot of us miss uh, when we exit the military. And so, you know, within that two hour time frame, I decided I was going to start a company. I had no idea what, I didn't know um, anything about business. In fact, when I told my wife, she's like, you got a C plus in economics. Like you, you're, you're terrible. Like, what, what are you thinking? Right. And it was like, well, you know what? You're young and dumb once and <laughs> corporate America is always waiting for me as a, as a backdrop. But, um, so that, that was kind of the, the precipice of what led me to, to starting Casey cattle company, which, you know, the, the whole premise there was bridging the gap between agriculture and the end consumer, uh, very similar to the military. Uh, there's 1% of the people in this country that produce the food for the other 99%. And the interactions between those two uh, are very rare and far between. So people rely on like what they see on social media to, to gather their information because nobody trusts the USDA anymore um, for, for good reason, for really good reason. Right. And uh, but there's so many misnomers out there about agriculture and the people producing food. I was like, man, I see I see an opportunity here. And so that's kind of where it all began. And I do have to laugh at like my original business plan to, you know, what we're doing now. So, I, I love the irony. Fucking, Both of you yeah. rangers have convinced wives to be like, hey, you guys got this for a little bit. Uh, well, <laughs> well, well I know, and then she was the sugar mama for another three years while I <laughs> you know, started this business without a paycheck. So do, do they teach that in ranger school? I mean, is that like just part of the phase, phase four? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They replaced desert phase. Yeah. That's wow. Great. So I got a question then. Uh, so you were you were going to um, build a career um, taking care of animals, large ones, um, and instead you what did you, what did you go ahead and do then? What was your business? Uh, I harvest those animals. That's the PC <laughs> term for them. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Bam. Uh, <laughs> he's providing <laughs> valuable nutrients to a weak American populace. That's what he's doing. man. Well, let's That's translate that for all the folks out there who think that. Uh, beef magically appears in the back of the grocery store and then it comes out on the shelves. That's not actually how it happens. Guys like this are out there doing the hard work. Bringing it yeah. to the table. Alex, it's funny you say that our last marketing video, like when we were pretty young and I really hadn't found my voice yet, the feedback we got from people is like, we don't like seeing calves next to steak pictures, right? And I was like, all right, <laughs> we won't do it. But it always really bothered me because you're like, man, that's where your steak comes from. Like that's where it originates from. And like, there, there's such a disconnect there. And like people that don't get out in, in nature and go hunt and like harvest their food, like, man, it's such a healthy opportunity to just like, you know, when you're on your phone or on these, on these laptops, like you just think the world's burning around you. But when you take a step outside and you go hunt some turkeys or deer or whatever you got, it's like, man, there's, there's something really healing there for the soul. Not so much so. And it's, I think it's cool. Yeah. Like how, when you when you understand like where your food's coming from you love appreciate and respect 
those animals so much more, whether it's, you know, cattle or it's deer, turkey or whatever, like you just appreciate like, you know, the entire system that we're in and, and where our food comes from, like how we feed. Yeah. hundred percent, man. It's, uh, it, we, we've started to embrace it. I'm sorry. I got the dog shaking here, but, uh, <laughs> we started to embrace it like on our marketing videos. Cause I just think it's, it's, you know, it might make some people angry, but like that is how your food is produced, right? Like it's whether it's coming from the United States or like if you're at the grocery store shelf and it's coming from Brazil or Australia or New Zealand or wherever else, um, you know, it's, it it wasn't just uh, manufactured in a, in a production line. It was given life and taken away so that you could, you know, have sustenance. Yeah. Yeah. Those people laugh. Go ahead, Gabe. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say people don't get up in arms about, you know, about a tractor out there harvesting a bunch of wheat out of a field. Um, And it's, I mean, essentially it's the same thing. They're not going to cry when they see little baby wheat sprouts coming out of the ground, sitting next to a loaf of bread. Um, So, you know, it's it's kind of, you're killing a lot of bugs there too, Gabe. So it's like, man, man. there's, there's no uh, good deed unpunished. I think that, you know, there's enough of the population, just enough of the population that's ready for truth on that level to know where their beef actually comes from. Um, and some people that are going to actually appreciate it because I mean, in reality, um, the stuff that we're getting in the grocery store, there's no damn telling where that stuff's come coming from and what they put into it, uh, before you, before you put it on the grill. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it was just recently that the, uh, USDA closed the loophole on, uh, you know, beef could have been from anywhere in the world, but if it was harvested or, uh, fabricated here in the united states you could put a usa product on it when did that happen patrick uh just within the last couple weeks and it's still i was gonna say i did not know that (laughs) yeah man so just like people finally started to find out about it and they're like this is bullshit like how is this possible from china or brazil mostly brazil man and it it makes people feel better i guess even though they're like there's no rules like there are here in the united states they're just chopping down the the best rainforest in the world to to manufacture products so um it's just kind of crazy people's thoughts on this stuff sometimes hmm. all right we're hitting our stride here just past uh 120 130 people live across platforms maybe it's more than that by now um for those of you who are listening to this we've got patrick montgomery from casey cattle and uh these guys have an amazing announcement to make Patrick, I understand, uh, by the way, share this. If you're out there listening, like blow that up, give it, you know, share it with your friends or whatever. Um, you, you're fairly, my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're fairly new to Bitcoin. Um, yet there's like this really cool promotional thing that you guys are doing, uh, having to do with Bitcoin. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, man, I am definitely the FNG when it comes to to Bitcoin, right? Um, we we brought a guy named Paul DeJoe on in January. He was just an absolute machine and um, one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Uh, and it's it's been awesome, right? And one of the big things Paul has talked about as he's learned the beef industry is like, man, I really think Bitcoin is is the future for this because um, there there really is kind of a war going on between the United States government and farmers, right? And specifically beef farmers, because they don't want the industry to exist. And so, um, you know, Paul came up with this idea and, uh, you know, I was like, man, I love it and let's roll. Uh, so, you know, he, he put up a tweet, what, two weeks ago and, you know, got reshared something like 600 times and, you know, had a half million views. And, you know, this is, this is kind of the, the initial step version one of us testing this theory. And so starting today, you are allowed and able to buy a half a cow from us, either Angus or Wagyu, uh, using Bitcoin. And by doing that, you're getting 21% off our retail price in honor of today. Man, I absolutely love it. All you meat eaters out there, you heard them. Let's get this uh, Bitcoin circular economy rocking. How long is this video? Uh, 30 seconds. I, we have a 30 second vision version in uh, one minute. I'm guessing that's the 30 second one. Let's roll it and see and, and, and give everybody a little taste here. We set out on a journey with bold aspirations to challenge the status quo and offer something truly authentic to our customers. We rejected the shortcuts and false claims that are so prevalent in our industry and instead chose to focus on what truly matters, taste and the animal. 
As a company founded on a foundation of military service, we understand the gravity of life and death. We know that the meat you buy at the grocery store wasn't just produced, it was given life. And that life was taken away so that yours could be sustained. This is a responsibility we take seriously. We're determined to make a difference in the way meat is sourced, processed, and delivered to your table. We believe that the journey from ranch to plate is just as important as the final product. And that's what sets us apart. We are committed to doing things the right way so that you can taste the difference in every bite. Hard right over easy wrong. This motto mattered in the military and it matters for those that chose to be a caretaker of the land and food it provides. This is what makes us Kansas City Cattle Company. Can I just say I appreciate including the audio for the chain? Like, I just love the sound of chains. <laughs> The guy that produced the video absolutely loved that. Like every time I'm opening a gate, he was like right up in there and I'd have to do it like six times. And I'm like, I don't get it, man. And he's like, go in slow motion. You know, it's like, ah. <laughs> oh, it's a good uh, include. Absolutely beautifully done. I mean, if you're out there, uh, I mean, veteran owned, operated. Now they are going out into the Bitcoin community offering a an amazing deal i mean if you if you're looking to help these guys you know whether it's a quarter or half or full cow um you know great chance to get your uh, your freezer full if you don't have a giant freezer what are you doing get a giant freezer and stock that thing full maybe you even have a gen set on the side of the house and make sure that when the power goes out that yep. you don't lose your half a cow and all that fun stuff but this is this is the way uh decentralized production decentralized buying uh, and, and making sure that we're supporting our own. This is this is absolutely it, Patrick. And uh, you know, hats off to you for. I mean, I, the tremendous amount of hard work. I, I can can only imagine what goes into freezing your ass off with cattle uh, in and out every damn day in the winter, especially up there. Man, that's a that's not an easy job. And the fact that you guys are not only you know like you were training to to care for animals. Um, I think there's something to be said for guys that understand that route of it first. They also understand. You know the, the sourcing of their their meat uh if they're hunters they they have this genuine connection to what they're doing they are there you know with those bodies when they're still warm after they've given their life um and to, to be able to provide that for everybody else out there in a very holistic meaningful way i think is uh doing everybody a favor and this is how it starts yeah i appreciate that shane it's a uh, it, it's it's fun man and the the freezer aspect is funny because we are working on like a the freaking Batmobile of a uh, custom Casey Cattle Company freezers. So stay Ooh. tuned for that. <laughs> That'd be cool. That I will say, funny, I will say, know. as far as like continuing on the freezer point, like because out in Iowa with the weather we get, a lot of times the power goes out. Um, if you have a, fr a chest freezer full of like a quarter or a half cow like that, it can actually help keep it cold longer without a source of power too so it's it's also an investment in the rest of the meat if you just get a, a bigger portion like that 100%. i love it man mike i'm gonna put you on payroll as a sales guy man <laughs> <laughs> deal yeah you guys go check them out it's uh casey cattle and uh this is like i said this is another uh, military-owned uh veteran company and they are doing some really good stuff out there for uh, for us in the Bitcoin community. So go out there, support them as much as you can. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to uh, buying one half B from you guys with Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, same here. I want you guys to to prosper, and I want you to be successful. All you guys out there who are listening to this thing that uh, you're looking for a source to buy your beef because I know that's that's a thing. Like in Bitcoin, Bitcoin for, for, first of all, Bitcoiners are big meat eaters. They just are. I don't know why that is or what's going on with that, but that's a thing. Um, but also, obviously, a lot, you know, most of our guys who are, you know, dudes from the military, the same same situation. So let's get that uh, circular economy rocking. Um, or let's, uh, let's buy some beef from these guys. Hell yeah. This is Appreciate how it's it, done. Alex. A lot of these Bitcoiners also like to lift heavy. So uh, we should just complete the circle here we've got the bitcoin we've got the heavy lifting let's get the beef in there and then we're, we're all good it's a closed circuit 
<laughs> yeah, maybe one last piece of this that uh, we could add to the roadmap for you guys is um, we we're all about uh, you know making sure we're supporting each other. But one of the other aspects of this is you know there might be some guys on some hard times that maybe we could donate some stuff to uh, in terms of guys you know go out and donate to maybe some veterans that are on hard times or something like that. Maybe one of the, the, the a perfect way to pool some money. Uh, get a quarter of a cow, get half a cow for some of these guys, these families out there that need it. Uh, you know, just just an idea. Uh, Man, it's a fantastic idea. So if you're hearing that, uh, contact us on Twitter at Bitcoin Veterans if you want to contribute like that. Um, we'll we'll organize it, and uh, we won't obviously dox anybody if you're if you're a veteran and you're in a situation where that might help you quite a bit like reach out to us and if you want to help on the other end by uh contributing the funds to make that happen we'll get it coordinated yeah Yeah. shane alex we're all about helping out on stuff like that too so make sure to ping us man absolutely patrick um patrick mcgummer everybody from kc cattle company pat thanks for uh stopping by brother uh we're gonna have you back on for a full episode here uh, you can update us on what's been happening since tonight. Uh, look forward to hearing that you have no more cows left and that you've had to start all over or, or some something to that where you've been wildly successful. Uh, I look forward to it, Shane. Thanks all for right. having me on, guys. Take care, awesome. Patrick. Thanks, thanks for stopping thanks, by. Man. man. That is awesome. What the hell? Now. Who? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Who let you watch? Uh there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching this video uh, earlier today, and it was like this video of a beach, and there were like lots of hot chicks and bikinis and I boats, saw that. and like there was this one stud muffin that kept reappearing throughout the course of the video. I was like, man, that looks like a guy I know. Is that really the guy? That's so that's hot. Him. That's him. I think so that's hot. him. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, oh. <laughs> we can't hear you. Still can't hear you. Yeah, you're you're coming in. Not at all. Whatever, it, whatever. It's <laughs> Not saying, at all. You still look good <laughs> saying it. Yeah, I mean, you kind of look like Hoff, but only better looking. I, I will give you that. I, when, when when Hoff didn't show up on my screen, I was like, oh, you know what? This version of Baywatch might actually this be feels right. better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did feel a lot better. Definitely. It's like if if Hoff and uh, look, <laughs> look at Anderson had a had a son. Look, did you see? Did you see Don Bay's um, criminally uh, overfollowed? Criminally underfollowed. <laughs> I thought it said overfollowed. Uh, either, Yo, either can way. y'all hear me now? Yeah, oh, yeah, we can oh, hear yeah. you now. But we it does. See. It does say overfollowed. Criminally over overfollowed. Yeah, yeah, criminally overfollowed. You know, I just I just threw that in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the best I could think of on the on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good man it's a live show <laughs> how are y'all doing dude every now and then y'all get a chance to make a, a kid's dream come true and and today this kid's dream comes true i get to be with y'all on the bitcoin veterans got the call up from the bullpen dude arm is hot ready to sling damn Woo! i love this oh, man. Let's go. Go. Hell. are you going to be uh, performing the rap for us later that you did at uh, bitlock boom um, oh, the, uh, the regulator or the regulate track. No, I do have some live rounds. I'll let off in the house for your entertainment. Um, no, no. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we might be able to do it. If, if Hobart jumps in on a rap, I'll rap. You know what I mean? Oh, Ho- hell no. Hobart's going <laughs> to have to spit some bars. Hey, he, he got Opti up on stage at Bitblock Boom to, to, I bet so- he did. Opti, I can see doing it. <laughs> I was, I was going, so they were like, Hey, you need to kick off with the, um, with the, with the intro for karaoke. And I'm like, all right, I'll do regulate. You know, it's a good theme song. There's some some Bitcoin stuff in there. And I'm like, but I need someone to, I'm not going to do both verses. So I'm going around hitting up all the outspoken folks. No, 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 I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I go to Opti and I go, Opti, he's like, dude, I'm just, uh, I'm tired, you know? And I'm like, Opti, bro, <laughs> when I get on that stage, you better be coming up there. He's like, you mean like Step Brothers? Like, like don't leave you hanging? I'm like, yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> so he ended up coming through and, uh, yeah, man, we 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 tried to get the party started. Man, that's awesome. You did great, man. I got to tell you, if you guys have not seen Dom rap, um, I was more than pleasantly surprised. I was like, holy shit, man. <laughs> hold, well, act- hold on. If you want to see Dom rap, then get your ticket to the Bitcoin Veterans Meetup 
There you go. In Nashville, because I don't know if I'm doxing you here or not, but he's gonna he's gonna be there. He's on the guest list as a uh, Dom Mike Hobart's wardrobe specialist. I'm coming in. <laughs> I'm coming in with the clothing racks, and I'm just like spraying. I'm like doing spray in fitting Mike. Like, all right, all right, let's fix they're gonna, it. Up they're a gonna be. Bit. It's gonna be all black. <laughs> yeah, all dude, black man, I love it. Yep. <laughs> Shit. Apparently, yeah. he's all of our wardrobe guy because we're all wearing black today. So. I know everyone's running the um, all black. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the MK Ultra playbook on you guys. You don't even realize you're doing <laughs> <Don't> it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's in our head. <laughs> well, we we used to walk around base singing uh, "Take Me Home Tonight" in the chow lines and everything like that, just to like see how many people on base we could get to start singing that as a psyop. And, That's hilarious. And it would catch like fire. Take oh yeah, me home tonight. And everybody was just like, man, just bobbing along in line i haven't heard that song forever and before you know it everybody's singing it on bass That's i awesome. played britney spears in the back of the elm tv and it caught on like wildfire <laughs> oh my god i was in iraq i had all i had all the black guys in my platoon which means i, I had all two of them like i had the driver and then i had the guy operating the turret and i they would just be blasting all their music and it's it's not like it's i don't like that type of music I don't like that type of music all the time, all, every single day, on every fucking time we leave the wire. And I'm like, Jesus, shut the mute. Hey, you know, you know who's a convert is Gary Leland said it himself. Tip and Z converted him. He's all hip hop, all rap now. Let's Gary. go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gary. Yeah. If anybody can do it, man, it's her. Gary is in the mix now. So uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, dude. You know, you got to bring the old guys along. That's right, man. Ain't nothing wrong with boomers. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, all right, all right, boomer. <laughs> Damn, that's fire. I get the boomer label, and I think I'm I think I'm millennial, but like people always go, "Yeah, boomer," and I go, "Whatever, dude." Yeah, <laughs> you just, you just skip you know. Gen X all together. Yeah, it's not an insult. You're just saying like I work hard, don't complain, and pay my taxes. Like I don't take it personally. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Uh, Got to consider that source. So, um, I, I, I'm going to pick back up where we were on the um, on the nice video that I saw earlier today. Um, I mean, that was like the sexiest damn video I've seen in a long time. Shout out to Obi. Yeah, Obi. Good man, job, it. Unreal. Um, yeah. Unreal. I don't know how Unhaunted, you wanted talented guy. Man, it was a beautiful thing, man. So, yeah, I mean, you, you know, I, I wouldn't say this to most guys, Dom, but I mean, you you look really good running on the beach. Um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Driving boats. I mean, yeah. unreal stuff that I can't do in real life. It was amazing. Should we should we put the nickname to bed right now? Should we? Is that how we yes. should kick off? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, for those that haven't seen the video, um, you know, it's a it's a Baywatch video, and that's my handle on Twitter's Baywatch. So a lot of people go like, oh, you know. Why, why'd you get that? You look like a fake ass Hasselhoff. And I'm like, I don't think I look like Hasselhoff, but like, you know, the way I got the name was in high school. I was a very subpar student, uh, but I was on, I played basketball, football, baseball. So um, I was like so bad of a student where they were going to kick me out of school. And my, my basketball coach, who was also my Spanish teacher was like, he calls me in and he goes, Dom, you're fucking up bad. They're going to, they're going to kick you. They want you out of here. And I go, all right, you know, I'll try to do better. And, uh, cause I used to do this thing where I get like academic probation for a month and then get off of it. And then you get on it. You know what I mean? Y'all remember playing sports. Like you just need to maintain that 2.2.0 <laughs> and you're good. So, so he goes, Hey, you need You know, the teachers are watching you. He's like, I'm telling you, Bay, they're watching your ass. They're on Bay watch. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I was like six. Oh, so, so then in practice, always he'd always be like, Hey, Baywatch, like you know, pick it up, dude. Stop slacking. And then, of course, if they're doing it on the team, it carries over. So, no yeah. origins in the show. That was the origins of the name. Man, that is so cool. That's yeah. awesome. Roger that. That's even better. <laughs> this is the video. but the video's way better. And from now on, I'm just gonna say it's because of this video. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Can you make it? Okay. Can you make it bigger? Can you make it, it full screen? We're working on it. Damn it! Every <laughs> week. Where's, that, where's last week's producer? He he might have been able to make this. No. Wow. It almost looks like Hassel, Hasselhoff, but it's not. No. No. I didn't notice that when I first saw it. I was like, all right. And then I looked closer, and I was like, did these did these fuckers did impose these, me on there? Did these. <laughs> 
What has been done here? Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Get ready. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh look at that guy. <laughs> yes. Oh, my, is... oh my God. Oh. oh. <laughs> that is really well done. Oh, I did. Oh my man, that's God. Good I, think, too. I think Dom. I think Dom takes home the award for best intro for a guest. Oh, dude, yeah. no yeah. doubt. That was <laughs> yeah. uh, not go. not deserving on that, dude. Not deserving. <laughs> We're about. Oh, to I got a. I got a shout out, Obi. He, he made that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well done, well, Obi. Well done, Obi. That is nice. Uh, I mean, I think you got all the guys in, in the audience more worked up than all two females. <laughs> <laughs> What happens with a bunch of veterans? <laughs> Probably yeah. the truth to that. <laughs> All right, oh, guys. Uh, we are uh, we are about at that time, and uh, it's at that time. It's, it's close too. I mean, we've we've already been going a half an hour. We we we've, we've talked about Casey Cattle Company already. Dom's warmed us all up. Good energy coming in, man. I am excited for this show. Yeah. What, are we, what are we doing? Like four hours, five hours? What's the what's the, I got to set my bathroom schedule early? Something like that. Yeah, you we standard around five and a half six. I got a I got a uh, Foley catheter in, so I can just go at any time on it. <laughs> just right down the leg, dude. Maybe an extra cup around. Who knows? Yeah. No problems. We got this. I could be going right now. You don't know. I'm just like, yeah, dude. Dom, Dom's team. He's that's it. <laughs> like, just straight, straight face pissing. If I say I'm going to do the show, dude, I'm not going to get up and go to the bathroom, bro. I'm fucking. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> Let's do this. Damn, veterans! Damn, that video is sick. That's the first time I've seen that. I think. Damn, you don't yeah. watch the story enough. That's for damn sure. Uh, <laughs> I told you I was a bad student, dude. I catch the clips. I don't go start to finish on anything. <laughs> Book nothing, dude. Yeah, we uh, we, we got a clip guy these days, but uh, that we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, it, it says on the screen we've got a guest tonight, uh, Don Bay. But first and foremost, we are Bitcoin veterans. Uh, very self-explanatory. We're Bitcoiners. We're veterans. There is uh, there's no middle ground. It's just that's what we are. That's what we do. That's what we love. We are here to put you back on the mission uh, to to take all that self sovereignty, love, liberty that you were indoctrinated with, and then it was perverted by this awful fucking machine that did everything wrong. Now to bring it back into a better incentivized place, it's a little more, I don't say wholesome. Uh, it's its everything that you ever wanted in the military without all of the bullshit. Uh, that's what we do here. We are putting all sorts of people on a mission. If you want to be part of it, you can contact us. Uh, we've got several, <laughs> several regions. We've got several different types of organizations going. Uh, we've got uh, the the Operation Bitcoin that Gabe runs, which is doing Skillshare stuff. We've got Brave that does some PTSD work, amongst other things. Uh, we are working with communications. We've got Citadels going on. There is a number of things. You don't even have to be a veteran or even veteran adjacent. We are collecting people left, right, and center that's what this is all about. It's what helped us when we were overseas doing you know, everything from you know, your family and friends and your community back home. That's what we need to bring home. That's what we need to uh, consolidate here within Bitcoin Veterans. Uh, our guest tonight just happens to be the one and only Dom Bay. He is the founder of Proof of Workforce, a 501c4 nonprofit. It's currently a fire captain, previously the president of the Santa Monica Firefighters uh, with 10 years of union experience. Dom's mission is to bring long-term and sustainable Bitcoin education and adoption to the workforce. He's a good friend of, I think, everyone on this show already, and uh, he is just a, a ball of energy. I think this is going to be a hell of a fun interview. Dude, thanks for the intro. I mean, I mean, hey, one thing, former president of the uh, Santa Monica Firefighters, I've been freed from those um, time served right there, so... so. Uh, uh, but no, thanks for the intro and really great to be on with y'all. And, um, 
love what y'all are doing in this space. I've worked with a bunch of you guys in different capacities. So excited to be on here and uh, we're going to we're going to cook up some good MREs on this uh, episode right here. So <laughs> from the bowling yays, baby, it's the bowling yays of MREs this episode. And y'all know which one I'm talking about. Uh, the second best followed by the breakfast eggs and bacon, you know, which doesn't come out quite as good, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh man. It's all about the cheese tortellini. And if you don't know how to make an apple pie from the cheese tortellini, come fucking talk to me. I'll hook you up. Dude. <laughs> we a hey, I had I I'll be real, like the first advanced MRE we opened on like a brush fire. I had to cheat. I'm like looking over, like I'm following, I'm following this dude right here, like stacking this thing up. It's too he much, looks like dude. he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot better than my first experience. I think I got uh, my my field rations uh, field strip for one of our first humps out in uh, Paris Island. We get out there, ground all our stuff, and they're like, "All right, let's go." And you open everything up by the numbers, and you eat your main course. I think I had the bean burrito. It looks like <laughs> some terrible thing wrapped in skin. And I was like, man, I have made the wrong fucking choice. Here. Did you have to eat it cold, or could you heat it up? <laughs> no, I was cold. Man. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> it was brutal. I think the first MRE I had the uh, it was one of like the lasagna, like the probably the vegetarian lasagna because I got to it last. Nobody wanted it, and I opened up the the pack of salsa to like you know make it better, and it like splurted me in the freaking oh. eye, and I had to deal with that for the next like four hours. Look here, here's a public service announcement for anybody getting ready to go to Ranger School or out in the field with MREs. Even in Ranger School, every meal I had out in the field was hot. Heat up the main meal first thing you do smash everything eat it as fast as you can because you only have like five minutes to eat everything eat all your other side shit and then you eat a hot meal to finish it off and you ha you're happy okay you can do it in five minutes if you just get down to it and if it had if it wasn't like a really bad day save the pound cake for a day where it really sucks Ooh, a pound cake. Yeah, the pound cake. Do they still, those do they aren't still bad. have a, what about those like crackers there? It's like one cracker is like 10,000 calories. It, it, it's like, right. expands oh, yeah. in, it spans in your stomach. It's I tried that a couple of times. It, yeah, it's like eating chalk. Yeah, it's oh, like man. that. It's like that Rumble bread from, up. yeah, it's like the Lord of the Rings bread, man. The freaking Lembas. You eat one of them, they're <laughs> going for days. <laughs> You know, you don't have to an elven leaf. <laughs> straight, straight shot, right to Mordor. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh. at, at some point in the Citadel in Nashville, we should do like an MRE food review. Mm. We're just like, look, oh, like, one bite. Everyone knows the rules. Uh, we're going to try today the Bolognese. <laughs> oh, dude. I'll give this a so seven. That would be hilarious. I'll give it a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Dom! You're giving me more work to do, but like, we got to make this happen. I got to oh, find yeah. a case of MREs now. That or well, the uh, two minute cracker challenge. You guys done that? Oh, oh no! Oh, don't no, 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 no. don't do it. Don't two do it. Two minute cracker challenge, everybody. Let's... Eat a fucking teaspoon of cinnamon instead. Let's yeah. Go. Ooh, yeah. There you go. All right. The cracker <laughs> challenge really right. does suck. Let's though. Get down like, sucks business. all the water out of you. Yeah. Let's, was, let's get down in business. That was my fault. Man. That was my bad. That was my bad. Real. You guys were like six minutes nonstop. Shenanigans hey, right now. That's what people want to hear. You want to hear right. us laugh. Actually, let, let's talk to Dom Bay about what he's doing. Dom, <laughs> you've got this this thing that you started. Um, you got a couple things going. Number one, you've got the Gauntlet, which is a show that you're sort of co-producing with Swan, Hoffa, Zaguri from Swan. Um, and you guys are talking to like uh, pension funds and uh, unions and this is a big deal because people don't understand like these entities have a tr tremendous amount of capital that when they start allocating to Bitcoin that is going to be in my mind sig pretty significant so there's that um, you've got your own union that's bought Bitcoin you're educating other unions on the process. Like, why would you think about it? How do you think about it? How do you learn about it? Talk to us about what you got going on, what you're working on. Um, and like, where's this, where's this all going, man? Like the, share some recent, uh, I know, I know you did a, a recent um, gauntlet podcast here just not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I'll give you like the, the brief overview of how I started doing this anyways. And this will resonate with y'all very well. Um, you know, been a firefighter for 15 years, 
did the union thing for 10 years, was the president for five years, uh, had, you know, the last four years being, being a president of a union from 2018 to 2022, obviously y'all know tremendous challenges, um, realized like two terms as president was enough. I was getting ready to phase out. I got into Bitcoin in 2017. So naturally after building, you know, a decade of experience, when I was leaving the union, I felt really good. Like I could, you know, I can run this, do this very well in my sleep. And then and I've developed the skills It'd be ashamed to just waste all that. So where, where's the intersection between Bitcoin and the work I've done uh, with the union? I care a lot about the work I did with the union. I wouldn't trade it for anything. We, we achieved a lot. I do believe in the mission of, you know, being an advocate for workers and making sure that, you know, their wages, benefits, working conditions are solid. So I started exploring this area, as you know, Alex, and a lot of things outside of my control sent, you know, heavy, heavy signals that this was the right place to go. And the more that I dug in, the more, you know, signs I started getting doors opened up. And so I just pushed through. So um, ended up helping the Santa Monica firefighters. Uh, I designed what I thought would be the most successful way to get a union to onboard Bitcoin. And I wanted to make sure I started in self-custody. So I developed a measure and it's always tough bringing it to your home place, right? Because I work there. And so, you know, uh, but I wanted to go to my union and go, look, here's this great thing I think that we're going to do. I'd like to bring it to my home spot first. And if you guys don't want to do this, by all means, I get it. This is something I'm passionate about. I'll give you the reasons why. Um, my board, the board at the time was like, we're in, let's do this. And so we did it. We became the first union to self-custody Bitcoin on the country in the nation. And then from there, I founded a nonprofit and started working with other unions um, to do the same. And we're doing it now. A point of clarification real quick, because when people hear they go union, pension, different things. So uh, there's about $29 billion in union assets in the United States. That's not including pensions. That is just membership dues, workers that pay dues and organizations that manage the, the funds for the participants. And then there's the pension funds, which you know, are 6 trillion right now in public pensions. That's just local and state, not even including federal pensions. But they're very um, connected in the sense that, you know, the worker trades time for money in two main ways. One is the short term, which is a, a salary or wage to earn a living. And then the long term in a retirement, they trade a career of 30 years. And so these two, you know, lanes are both areas where fiat screws over the worker. In the short term, their money's losing purchasing power. They're constantly chasing these 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 pay raises to keep up with inflation and, you know, they're always chasing these to keep up and then in the second the second route um, through pensions, you know, they trade uh, their time, let's say you're going to retire at 30 years, a bunch of these pensions have, you know, difficulties with funding levels and they don't have the funds needed. I do have some fun facts for y'all on pensions that have to do with the military, which I'll share later. Um, but, you know, they end up, they balance, they balance the errors of the legacy finance system who's reckless with lending things like the financial crisis. And what do they do? They give a little bit of a bailout enough to stay solvent. And then they go, Alex, Mike, we need two more years from y'all. And y'all work in an industry where, you know, two years could be the difference of dying on the job and retiring. Um, and so that's a big, that's a big deal to balance that with people's time and their lives. So, um, I work with tons of unions. Now we have the show going, I do some stuff with workers, mostly in the U S but also internationally, a little bit in El Salvador, I'm going to Belize coming up. So I'm just, I just want to see the worker win from Bitcoin by any means necessary. And, and that's what we're going to do at proof of workforce, um, by any means necessary. Man, that's great. Do you want to talk a little bit about what is uh, what is the Nakamoto Gauntlet thing? And I know you just did one recently. Um, <clears throat> what have you learned from this process? And maybe talk a little bit about your most recent Nakamoto Gauntlet. And uh, are are these guys catching on? So, like, for those you don't know, Nakamoto Gauntlet is is they're interviewing union leaders. Um, 
who are responsible. They're on allocation boards. They're responsible for allocating uh, funds from these $29 billion worth of, of assets under management. Um, and some of them are, are, are apparently catching on, right? Like, like what are your, what is your experience with this? Yeah. So y'all know Hoffa, um, at Swan mastermind, as far as like portfolio modeling, the guy could have retired. He's got a passion for Bitcoin, creates this, this, um, amazing modeling tool called the Nakamoto portfolio, which allows any fund manager to go in and plug Bitcoin into their portfolio and see how does this affect my portfolio? Five year, 10 year. Um, what if it's up, down? What if Bitcoin does well, et cetera? So when I started playing around with it, I was like, you know, career risk is the biggest obstacle for institutional funds like pensions or someone that manages a big union fund. If only there was a place where these fund managers could come without the risk, um, a place that understands their risk and understands the barriers to them adopting Bitcoin. And we could just play with Bitcoin. We can talk about, you know, first of all, let's talk about what the fund is doing. Second of all, let's model some Bitcoin. We're not doing this. This is hypothetical. So let's play around with this just to get past that fear. And so Hoffa, of course, was like, love the idea. We put the show together. Uh, we had an incredible guest with Elliot who launched uh, the first ETF in Canada and did a lot of consulting for the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund and modeled, a, um, a, you know, what we do is we have them come on the show. And then after we have them on the show, we let them go. And then me, Joe Carlosari, Foss, who wasn't on this show, but has been on the other two and, and Hoffa, we get in and pretend we're, we run the pension. So what will we do? You know, and, and of course I go, let's go 100%. And, and, you know, Joe's like, I don't know about that. You know, we shouldn't go 100%. We might want to go one or two. <laughs> so we, we, we modeled this and then we attach it to the show so that other pension funds, when they watch the show, can see, well, what if they had taken our recommendation? Um, so this last show, we had um, the CIO of the Houston Firefighters Pension Fund. This guy was hired in 2015. He used to do investment managing for the UN pension fund. He wow. managed, he manages $5.1 billion assets under management. And he's done an incredible job in keeping the Houston pension fund, I think funded close to a hundred percent since his time. So this guy's a rock star had him on the show. And the biggest takeaway is we're early y'all we're, we, we're so early for those that watch the price all the time and, you know, they're seeing the having and they go, damn it, the ETFs. I thought the institutions were coming. Y'all have to understand we are not even in the first inning of institutional adoption. We are pregame right now. We're not even pregame. We're on the way to the stadium and they're talking about what are we going to do in the game today? And that was explained really well in the episode. And, you know, you can check it out. And there was tons of just nuggets that he dropped. But that's my biggest takeaway is that there is a long there's there's going to be a process for institutions. They are slow moving ships. You can't just turn them on a dime. Uh, it's like the Titanic. you got to shovel the coal in and then start, you know, turning the ship slowly. Uh, so that was my biggest takeaway. And it's been an incredible show. Highly recommend if anyone wants. I believe that the show we did two days ago is the best mm -hmm viewpoint into institutional adoption what's what it looks like right now so definitely head over and check that out as a why group. do you why do you say that like why why are we early and why do you say that this was the best view into institutional adoption of bitcoin so i say we're early a lot from uh conversations i've had with funds uh the cio that was our guest uh he mentioned you know confirmed this belief that hey there's more people in institutions that are talking about Bitcoin than you than you know, and they want to get involved. It's the the discussion isn't should we do it or shouldn't we? It's we should. How how are we going to do it? And that's why we're early, because in order to add Bitcoin, it's not like the individual investor that can just go, oh, the price looks good here at sixty two. Let's stack some sats. They have to change all kinds of things internally from, <laughs> you know. Uh, guidelines that that control what they allocate to that have to go through an approval process to they have rebalancing um, uh, basically parameters 
imagine stacking Bitcoin and your rebalancing parameter is 5% and you have to sell, sell and you know what I mean? Like they have, yeah. to, that doesn't work for Bitcoin, right. um, you know? <laughs> and so there's all these different things that they have to ready. He also mentioned that custody, this, this CIO we had on the show said, I would have bought Bitcoin early. I found it in 2011 by downloading the code because I have a computer programming background, but there was no custody solutions for institutions at that time. I couldn't do it if I wanted to. A uh, last thing I'll just say he, he brought up, which is really good is 15 years of Bitcoin history. There's no institutional data that they could bring to like a pension fund and then say, right. Hey, we modeled this because the investment team's going to go, who's buying here? You're going to go, well, Dom and Alex were stacking right here. And they go, oh, <laughs> yeah, the, they go these sorry. Are dudes are stacking. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't make decisions mm -hmm. on how Dom and Alex stack Bitcoin. Show me some big funds that do that. So as these mm -hmm. early institutions start to show that data, it, it's going to be allow folks that already want to do it to bring it onto, onto the portfolio. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then just, the, only, the only reason I say it's a best viewpoint is because how often do you get to hear from an active CIO that manages a pension that has the, yeah. you know, the, 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 the huevos to come talk about Bitcoin. It's very hard to get these people. That's why we've only had a show every like three or four months. It's incredibly hard to get these people to talk about Bitcoin. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing. Very early days. Uh, Shane, if you take a look at our, at our, at our, uh, there, you got it. So this guy, there's this guy named Eric Balkunas, uh, is a senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg. He's basically saying that IBIT has about 60 holders that have reported by reported. I mean, these are entities that are required to report their holdings. Okay. Uh, they only account for a tiny 0.4% of total shares out. He's talking about the ETFs right now. So what he's saying here is that <laughs> institutions are making up a tiny, tiny portion of all the, all the volume that's flow, flowed into the ETFs, which by the way is absolutely massive. The volume that's coming to these things is wild. So what that means is this is pretty much all small, uh, investors, maybe, maybe small RIA shops, retail investors. Here's the truth. The big guys, the big, the big pension funds, the sovereign wealth funds, the large money managers, they haven't even entered the room yet. hundred, hundred percent. Um, and you know, that's why we we talk about zoom out have a big picture and, and again folks are looking at the price going oh you know they get impatient but you know remember it's not even the beginning of this cycle yet and uh another thing the cio mentioned he said in 10 years i can't see any pension fund that doesn't have an allocation to bitcoin within 10 years Wow. <clears throat> I got a question for you. So um, and I, I'm sure that these different fund managers are watching each other and they they see who's doing what. Um, is there what what industries in particular do they pay most attention to? Um, and so and I'm asking, you know, what's it going to take for thing, you know, for things to reach that tipping point when they say, OK, wait a minute, look, they're doing it and they're doing and now they're OK. It's time for us to go ahead and jump in. How does that work? Yeah. So if I understand correctly, as far as like uh, folks that they look to, to kind of take guidance from, um, especially since they're more conservative, uh, a little bit separate from that question, where are they putting a lot of their money right mm -hmm. now? Let's start there. Um, pensions are chasing liabilities right now. There, there was an article written that said pensions these days are addicted to risk. They're putting tons of money into private equity and hedge funds. The problem is, is that when you read up on private equity, the last 10 years were, you know, it was off to the races, but that sounds like it's not going to be the story in this, you know, if this, this interest rate environment stays pretty steady, like you're not going to have that same 10 year performance. Um, I think, I think the ETFs is massive. The fact that those are even offered that definitely, you know, those issuers like BlackRock Fidelity for sure are in constant communication with pension funds. So that's a start. I think other pension funds are going to be one of the biggest catalysts for getting some of these folks to get moving. And how I see that playing out 
you know, this, this guest we had on the show, they allocated in 2021. And so as Bitcoin goes up, you'll be able to see clear ways that, you know, a very conservative investment paid off well for the fund. It'll be a healthy fund. Right next door is a place like Dallas. We were just at Bitblock Boom. Funded January 1st, 2023, they were funded at 39%. Fund managers say under 40, you have no chance to, to come back. You're done. Um, Ex unless explain you can... that for a minute. What are the ramifications of that? What does it mean if you're funded like 39%? What does that mean to people who are who are members of this pension fund? It, it means they're in big trouble but but to get more technical what it means is that the assets that they hold on the books are only 39 percent of what they need to pay out and what they're committed to now wow. that's not that's not they don't have to pay that out tomorrow because remember let's say um the houston let's just take like the dallas firefighters and police they have a, a group of people that work for them right now and they have uh, liabilities of all those people when they retire, they have to pay out. That doesn't include new hires. That's just all the people right now. So all those people working, they got 39% of the money. The problem is the cost of carrying that unfunded liability, it's it's like an interest rate. It's like falling behind you know, on your house payment. It starts to accumulate to where you can never get out from under it. Additionally, you have to sell assets to make payroll at a loss at some points, or you have to borrow money. It's a bad situation that snowballs out of, out of control. So, you know, they're going to be looking for bond measures or who knows what to have to, you know, refill that. But even if they refill it, they're chasing a train that is so far running away that you get, you start to get really worried that if you're, you're a firefighter there or, or a police officer that they may say, sorry, dude, like we don't have it. Um, you know, I don't know what your plans were when you retired. I hope you had a good career, but like, we're going to have to adjust the equation. You're not going to get what we, you know, I shook your hand when you got hired here and you could have done anything in the world, but I shook your hand and said, come be a firefighter police officer for us for 30 years. And we'll give you this. You looked at the paper and you said, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. Alex is calling me to work here. Mike says, I can get a job in the energy field doing this. I want to do this. You know, that means something. And so you, when you worry about that kind of changing, uh, it's it's not good. Okay. Um, real quick, because we we haven't gotten to where the uh, <clears throat> we, we kind of detoured, but I want to keep this detour going a little bit because as the resident doom lord, we're at a conversation point that, Dom, I know you and I kind of like connected over on spaces when we were first talking about, and we kind of like – have tiptoed into it talk can you talk about why it is so impactful that the um pension that you mentioned earlier the pension fund manager keeping it at close to 100 percent makes him such a rock star because there's a situation going on in, in u.s pensions and internationally but we don't have to talk about them but like u.s pensions that is particularly um dismal right can you yes. talk about that? Why it's important to keep it 100%? Why why is it that keeping it at 100% makes you such a rock star? Like, why is that not the standard? Like, what's going on with pensions across the U.S. right now? Because what I'm getting at is that they were radically underfunded last time I checked. Yeah, it's 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 hard to do because when imagine sitting on top of imagine being the CIO of a pension fund, whether it's for military, police, firefighters, you got all these people um, for Houston, they got 3,700 firefighters. That's all their families, everyone that's counting on this fund to deliver retirement for them. And, you know, I, I don't, it must be hard to sleep at night. You know, I managed a union for 120 people where, you know, I was, I was responsible for the well being of them and their families based on the things I had within my control um, as a, but 3,700 folks and you have to make investment. Let's just say, you're going to lean towards conservative. You ain't going to be, you know, you're, you're not going to be uh, taking big swings at stuff. The problem is raises, um, people living longer, these liabilities, the costs are always accumulating. And especially as, you know, the world changes and you, you know, when pensions were first designed, you just bought, bought some bonds and sat on them and paid a little bit out and you're good, you know, set it and forget it. Um, but, but now these pension systems are complex, uh, you know, 
the all these things are under levers of the of the legacy finance system. So bonds, all right, they change something here and now bonds suck. They change something here and real estate gets smashed. They change something here, equities do well, they get smashed. So it's impressive. The guy's a rock star because it's incredibly hard to do. And you have to really balance that perfect amount of risk and you know caution in achieving these returns for the pension fund so that all these 3,700 people can have a good retirement. And that, that adds to like the scariness of it. Because when you're talking about how they should be and they tend to des naturally desire conservative positions, they're being forced farther out onto the risk curve to try and meet their obligations, right? And like like you said, the equity situation is not, it's looking questionable. We'll just say that it's uncertain. And if equities take a turn for something worse, then the pensions get negatively impacted in a really big way. Yeah. And then you have all of our firemen, all of our police officers, EMTs, soldiers, union laborers, auto workers, like everybody starts to really feel the pinch in a terrifying kind of way. Yeah. Y'all want to hear a fun fact real quick to break yes. from the okay. Here's a here's a pension piece of history that that so the first pension in the United States was a naval pension. And mm -hmm. you know, you know how it was funded? um naval prizes so basically in 1800 they created this um it actually was in 1775 but it was very roughly drawn out but in 1800 they finalized it and basically if you confiscated ships and lands in the act of war then they they took that sold it and a percentage went to this pension fund to pay injured naval uh you know uh, uh enlisted folks and and officers and wow, yeah, it's 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 interesting because you can almost it's almost like an original sin, right? Like like the first pension was was funded with theft, uh, which is pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's legal legal theft. Legal yeah, theft. it was yeah. it was Viking plunder, is what it was. Yeah. What did what did they call that? What what did they call those guys? They weren't they weren't pirates. They Privateers. Were the, thank you. They were given basically um, permission by the government of the United States to say, look, if you're out there and you're a private enter enterprise and you're, you're confiscating or sinking enemy vessels and taking their stuff, uh, we're good with that legal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. interesting, the history. And then they had like, um, the army had like a really bad pension. So they, they made it uniform finally. Of course. And then, and then this this carried over. See, what, is, what is the army gonna? This is this is obviously where the navy is better than the army. What is the army gonna take? Like the navy can get out there and take all we, those we ships. Take, we take oil. Land and all that. Is what we take. Yeah. yeah, we control all trade, motherfuckers. <laughs> well, this this carried over to the first municipal pension, which was the New York police officers was the first U.S. municipal pension. And that thing was funded on theft, too. They used confiscated, unclaimed, confiscated property and then fines for Sunday laws, which I don't know if you all looked into Sunday laws. There used to be a bunch of laws of like shit you can't do on a Sunday or they ticket you. <laughs> <laughs> and. And that and that was what they used to fund the New York police. And by the way, it was underfunded from the start. The only two pensioners, they couldn't they didn't have enough to pay them out. So like the, I've been I've been um, reading a lot about. Uh, unfortunately, I spent a lot of time reading on pensions now. And, I, and there's there's a ton of great history. But military pensions in the U.S. paved the way for firefighters and police officers to get pensions. They were the first to follow afterwards. A lot of them, of course, were formally enlisted folks that came back and took those jobs. And then teachers came afterwards. And with the teachers, that's where the birth of the modern day defined benefit pension system was born um, and things kind of going from there. So I thought that was a cool piece of like military pension history that I wanted to, to share um, with y'all. That is pretty yeah. cool. I appreciate oh, yeah. that. Stolen booty. Stolen. You know, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a shirt that goes. My pension was funded by booty. <laughs> <laughs> and you go. No, that's a fact. It's a historical fact. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, really uh, if you're just tuning in, yeah. our guest tonight is Dom Bay. Uh, he is the, the the CEO and founder of uh, Proof of Workforce. Uh, <laughs> a 
having a pretty good time so far. Um, Dom, uh, you, you've got uh, a lot going for you in, in this space already. Uh, and it, it's interesting that you're talking about how this is just getting started, that the, the big money hasn't even evolved. Um, when when you're looking at this, and it, you've been at this since 2017, what is... Um, what is something you're really surprised with in the, the in the union space that maybe you you weren't you know counting on something that uh, was on, on the on the you know the the nicer side, not the doom and gloom side of of Bitcoin? What's what's something that you really enjoyed finding out that maybe you uh, kind of surprised you? Yeah, the the most surprising thing that I wasn't expecting to take place is the individual adoption of Bitcoin and its values after an organization does something and signals that it's going to place Bitcoin on the balance sheet, that it values self-custody and explains why they do that. I, I, I always, I'll just say, if you walked into our, one of our fire stations prior to doing this and after you, you would be blown away. Our, our, our folks are really curious about this over there's a large amount of Bitcoiners that we have that are now Bitcoiners and they're 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 interested in the right things, right? You know, they want to know about the scarcity, the protocol, how mining works, the halving. And it's amazing. I'll come into it's funny. I walk into work at the station and like I'll be filling my coffee. It's like six in the morning at the fire station and I'll just hear a voice and they go, Hey, so uh, this having thing, it's the, it's the issuance that gets cut in half. And I'm like, Damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I get my coffee, dude? And they're like, you know, I've been looking into this. The miners are going to have a challenge. I was like, what are, what are you reading, bro? Like, <laughs> they're, they're on Reddit for them all night. Like, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're, dude, they're constantly, you know, like talking. You know, they'll go, man, the ETFs, the outflows, man. I'm like, what are you listening to, bro? But <laughs> it's, it's really been inspiring. It's something that I never... Uh, expected, but it confirms the mission that we're on and why it's so important. You know, I do believe, you know, we all know we're just here to build on the last block that was laid before us, right? And and there's y'all have done incredible work. There's so many titans that have done great work in this space. All we all we need to do is take that proof of work and build the next block. And I believe the next block is to just continue to broaden adoption across different, you know, facets of society. And I think the union serves as a great vehicle to reach those different facets, the workers, and not just unions. I'm an advocate for all workers, whether they're in a union or not in a union. Um, but the workforce is like, you know, they're the lifeblood of the country at home. And, and you know, when I see an organization adopt Bitcoin and its values and what it does for the members afterwards, I know we're on the right track. And eventually it's not just about creating more Bitcoiners. It's about creating Bitcoiners who place Bitcoin towards the top of their important issues, because that will then start to impact some of our greatest problems that we see at the national level. Some of these attacks, when people place it at a high value, you're going to see these, these things will get sorted out for themselves because you can't launch the type of shit that Warren launches and all these, you know, attacks on self custody when people place it at the highest level because they yeah. will they will <laughs> act on it and they'll act on it immediately and yeah. they will bounce people out. I've seen it happen. There's Brother, certain things they don't touch. Man, I, I totally agree with that. So for so for a period of time, I worked for a union and I saw sort of how the politics and the unions work together and like unions are incredibly powerful in terms of how politics in the United States of America plays out. Like union contributions to specific politicians are a massive factor. And this is so exciting to me because like the whole thing about unions is, is like, look, we want to be rewarded fairly for our labor. This is our lifeblood. This is our time that we are investing in, in labor that we're earning a thing. And we want that to be fairly rewarded. We want it to be, to be protected and the truth of the matter is, is that in a fiat system because they're constantly printing more money it's always stealing your time it's always stealing your labor and a lot of people don't understand that so the the one of the most exciting things to me about this is, is that because people who are in unions are starting to figure this out with bitcoin they're like oh my gosh you're trying to tell me for the first time ever in human history there's this form of money 
that's not going to lose purchasing power. You're telling me I can put my my wealth and my time and my my sacrifice, and in some cases, like literally, like putting my life on the line. I might die today. Like every freaking firefighter, uh, EMT, police officer that goes out there every single day, like when they say bye to their wife, it's like, "Love you, babe." Might be the last time. Right. They know that the wife doesn't say it. The dude doesn't say it, but they know that. And it's like, man, if that's what you're doing, doesn't it make sense to, to invest your life essence, your time that you're taking away from your family, putting your life at risk into something that's going to grow in value instead of being destroyed in value. And bro, like as soon as the unions figure this out. I mean, it is going to, in my opinion, it is going to change the political landscape of this country. hundred, hundred percent. You know, it's, you mentioned so many good things there. Um, time card theft. If I do that at work, I get fired. If I go punch my clock 15 minutes early and say I was there, they're like, you're gone. But if they pay me and that doesn't hold the value of what I worked for, it's all good. No problem. Um, you also mentioned, the power of unions and that they're contributors, you know, there's, I also see Bitcoin having the ability to get unions more neutral again. Like I, you know, big, uh, union shouldn't be aligned with one party or the other, yeah. but, but because it's so hard, I'll give you some stats in 2023, close to 500,000 workers, uh, stri were on strikes, uh, in major strikes all over the country. You saw it. Why? because they couldn't get raises to keep pace with inflation. So in turn, they were taking pay cuts. That's not sustainable. And so they have to get politically active and one party rewards a union more than the other. And then they have an alliance. I see Bitcoin as kind of neutralizing values of a union again and going, we don't need to rely on a political party to protect you know, our purchasing power for our members. Bitcoin does that for us. We're still going to participate in the system. We're still going to you know, support people that that support us and allow us to continue to earn a living from this Bitcoin. Um, but we don't need to, you know, ally with a party over the other and get involved in this toxic game of two party politics, which we know uh, is no good. Yeah. Damn, dude. Um, while we're on the subject, and I'm gonna make a little plug while we're here. A couple of them actually. Um, you know, we, we've mentioned a little bit, if if you're not aligned with the right people out there, maybe it's eating at your soul, maybe you just can't stand where you're working and it's kind of, it's, it's you know, doing some things to you and your health. Um, there are ways out of this, okay? First and foremost, uh, Gabe up here uh, happens to have a, a direct line to the man over at Operation Bitcoin. Um, they are doing an incredible job of standing up the Skillshare program for vets who are in and vets who are already out. Um, if you're looking for a place in Bitcoin, it is a just a, a tremendous opportunity to you know get in with a group of guys first and foremost, and, and girls for that matter, and start networking and learning and seeing what is available out there. Because if you if you don't know what to look for, maybe you're going to be missing out. Uh, and if uh, if you want to get in contact with Gabe or any else uh, anyone else about Operation Bitcoin. Uh, hit us up in the chats or become a, uh, a you know a member in the chats. You can go to bitcoinveterans.com org. 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 Thank you. Yeah, dot org. Um, and the next thing I want to plug is we get some pretty amazing discounts to uh, some of the biggest shows out there. Uh, we just got back from Bitblock Boom, which was amazing. Uh, Dom was there, myself, Alex. And I got to tell you, you know, we had so many veterans show up uh, and, and thanks to everybody who did too. everybody that put it together, made it work. Obi, especially uh, thanks for bringing all that swag uh, and the uh, the bourbon for, you know, uh, kicking the whole thing off at the end. Un unbelievable turnout by the Bitcoin veterans. This was a this is probably the smallest show that we're going to do this year. Um, we, we got people 70% off tickets there. We're going to get people 70% off tickets, uh, at, uh, at the Nashville, uh, Bitcoin magazine, uh, where we're going to have a Citadel and everything else. So 70% off there. And then we've announced it, haven't we for uh, PB now as well, right? We're, Alex? we're not talking about the exact percentage, but I will say that it is the biggest discount yeah. that Pacific Bitcoin has ever given to anybody. It's massive, uh, to the point where the tickets are, <laughs> They're almost free. You, you should definitely connect with us. Yeah. 
Um, and the reason why you want to come, if you haven't met people in Bitcoin yet, if you're out there and you, you, you've just kind of been doing this Bitcoin thing alone, maybe doing it through Twitter and, and now you're starting to see this kind of stuff, the layer zero, the, the human layer is the most powerful, powerful part of Bitcoin. This is how we come together. And I will tell you from you know, my own experience, if you will go to these conferences and you will meet people and you will you know, tell them what you know and have you know, and listen to them about what they know, you're going to find your spot in Bitcoin. There is literally something for everybody. So if you're looking for that way out, come meet your people. If you're already a Bitcoiner, these people are everywhere. They are some of the smartest most well-spoken, nicest human beings I've ever met in my entire life. And they they need you. Not only do they want you, but they need you to grow this movement to create more Bitcoin evangelists. Um, I think that's where I'll, I'll say it, but come to the shows. If you, need a, if you need a ticket, you need 70% off for Nashville, let us know. PB, great show, amazing show. And uh, we'd love to have you out there and meet you. Hell yeah. Hey, I'll 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 I'll, I'll uh, uh, piggyback on that, saying absolutely, we're checking out, and I'm a proud supporter of Operation Bitcoin's latest initiative to educate. Um, it's 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 current military personnel. Um, There's a combination, yeah. So we've got some veterans, and we have some active duty. Yeah. So that was when I saw that. It's like, oh, done. Uh, and I think it's an incredible initiative, and I hope everyone listening will please go support that because. Um, it's like priceless to, to catch, uh, military folks at a time where they, you know, really need that, that financial literacy and to find Bitcoin. So please support that. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for your gift. Um, very gratefully received, man. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got a, uh, well, I can go ahead and say it. I mean, it, it's been announced, but, uh, the state of Georgia has, has approved us, to uh to deliver introductory bitcoin training sessions um in a state-run veteran training program wow so, um, dude yeah so it's a it's a big step forward for us um and we we put we put out a call to action uh because it's, it's going to require a little bit of an investment on our part to make it happen to get the materials going together we did agree to to feed everybody so that was part of the that was part of the gig well worth it though um and so dom yeah you were uh you you were in the first round of uh supporters for that so thank you um, and it, and it's, it's like, uh, it's like we've all said before, I mean, it's, this is about the people. Um, it's about one another. We, each of us could choose to do other things. Dom, you, you could choose to do a lot of things. Um, I mean, you're, you're highly talented, you know, maybe in school you were a subpar student. Um, but you know, I think you've turned out to be pretty okay. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send this to my mom. Also, I'm gonna send this and be like, You're yeah. the okayest guy I know." <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no, I, I appreciate, it. I appreciate it. But, but really, um, what you're doing is, I mean, you're focusing on something that's so important, um, not only in our country, but you know, that is positioned to have a global impact, and that is focusing on the people that are showing up and making things happen every single day. That's our workforce. And that matters. I mean, these are the people out there that are that are getting up in the morning. They're getting out there and they're making it happen. And I mean, you started in your you know in your own area of operations with first responders, which I mean is is freaking awesome. And to echo what Alex said, I mean, these are people that are showing up every damn day. And I mean, for a lot of them, it's for thirty years of their lives, man. And I've got the the utmost respect for all of them. And so for you to go out there and to do what you're doing to to help to strengthen their positions as they approach retirement i think is is absolutely amazing so uh kudos to you on that um and i'm and i also have a question i'm curious um so what other industries are you or do you envision will be most receptive to this um in 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 addition to the first responders um unions uh what what else are your sights on yeah i think i think well I'll tell y'all one that I'm having. I'll tell. I'll wait till we get offline. There's one union that I call. It's either like a suicide mission or a um, like a unicorn, like the Holy Grail. Bro, I already know who you're talking about. It's <laughs> it's the it's it's the National Treasurers Employees Association. It's basically the union that the IRS members are a part of. I'm like, I don't know. This, like, do you, can you imagine sending that email? Like, hey, y'all need Bitcoin. Or like, tell us about what you do, my friend. And you're like, no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to send it. And they go, no, no, no. Tell us more. Who's 
who's holding union? Uh, who's holding it? Okay, cool. Um, uh, you just need to get uh, audited. Dom, so Dom's just going to Leroy Jenkins right dude. after that. Dude. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm like, yeah. But, but I see. Um, uh, Tom, I see. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, whether whether it's the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, mm-hmm. the Teamsters, I think I think um, there's there's going to be interest spreading in a different um, industries. One thing I will say is is certain industries sit poised um, to face a threat of displaced workers more than others. And if you look at, for example, drivers, uh, they're a big one. You know, there was there was something they were they were protesting in. Um, California, and usually, right, the governor of California, he he usually do if the unions want something, he'll go. All right, like we're he's very supportive of the unions. They wanted a bill that basically said that any automated like driver had to have an operator inside, and he said, no, "I can't do it." It's you know, no, and they vetoed it, and I was like, "Whoa, dude, what?" Like, but. You know, th- this is uh, uh, your drivers. Uh, I wrote down. Let me see. Let me give you a couple stats on here. Uh, I want to say there's like, uh, I'll pull it up. But but there's millions of drivers and and folks in related industries, um, whether they work on you know assembly lines for vehicles, etc., that are that can be displaced. So I hope they'll find Bitcoin sooner than others, so that they can use it as a negotiating tool and negotiate from a place of strength to have something as an organization that's solid. Um, And interesting thing on the IBEW, I don't know if y'all saw, I just confirmed this actually when I was at Bitblock Boom, I finally got a hold of Terror Wolf, but I read an article that in Pennsylvania last year, there was a bill to ban Bitcoin mining. They were going to create a moratorium. This guy was sponsoring the bill. And he ended up withdrawing the Bitcoin moratorium from the bill. And he said to the press, the reason I withdrew this is because the trade unions called me and basically said, you better take this off or <laughs> like we're done. And so he wow. pulled it off immediately. Wow. So I was like, who the hell's trade unions? Who's someone's employing union labor? I got a hold of Terror Wolf and I think Stronghold's out there. But they utilize um, union. They work with union labor for the construction side of things, and when they're putting together the miners, and that kind of, I ended up writing this article: Should miners use union labor? And for some, it doesn't make sense because mining is a very automated thing. You don't think of needing a bunch of workers, and maybe in a state, it may not be important. But in Pennsylvania, if you're going to have a moratorium on mining, Shit for them, it was well worth it, even if it comes with extra headaches and higher pay and some other things. So I thought that that was really interesting, and and I could definitely see I, the IBEW because of the electricity side of things should be all over Bitcoin. They already oh, worked yeah. in some of the spots. I mean, yeah, that, and and it also would be amazing for Bitcoin to also say, yeah, the IBEW are holders. They're Hell the yeah. electricians. They're they're the the frontline workers of you know, our grids and things like that. And they're on board, they're holders. So I really want to get them on board. I've I've worked with a couple people that have tried to do it locally. The challenge is I think their local unions have less autonomy than I'm used to on the fire side. Um, We have, we're part of the International Association of Firefighters, but our local unions are autonomous organizations that hold their own money, decide what they're going to do, et cetera. And I think the IBEW's framework is a little different. So, but I'd love to see them um, get get involved. And anyone who's, you know, again, I I will fly any place in the country. I'm going to head down to Arizona soon. I'll talk to any membership union just to tell them what we're doing and why. So, if anyone's ever listening from the IBEW, just say the word. We'll be there, and we'll bring Man. a bunch of folks with us. It makes so much damn sense. Let's let's talk about like. I don't think people actually are able to, for the moment, when you start talking about numbers like trillions, right? This is a hard number for people to wrap their mind around. And you mentioned that pension funds for unions are like $6 trillion. Unions control another $29 billion. Um, We're talking about $6.029 trillion worth of capital. Now, if these entities invested one percent of their portfolio into bitcoin we're talking about 60 billion dollars right 
This is like I think that's going to be what four um, times. Yeah. So we 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 went from in January. What was the price in January? Does anybody remember? We we went from the beginning of the year, January. We're talking like forty ish thousand, forty two thousand, forty four thousand, up to sixty three thousand today on about eighteen billion dollars of inflows into the ETFs. One percent from these entities would be sixty billion. I mean. We have not even scratched the surface of the iceberg. And consider this, Alex, that's the U.S. So uh, I'll give you quick numbers. 14.3 million union members in the U.S., 207 million union members on the planet Earth. The U.S. manages 29 billion, in, in excluding pensions. There's 6 trillion of U.S. pensions. But then there's anywhere from 25 to $48 trillion of retirement funds, pension money, et cetera, globally. And remember, when the biggest pension funds in the U.S. get on board, there's a lot of pension funds globally that go, hey, just CalPERS did this. Now we're going to do this. Big pension funds did this. Ontario teachers did this. We're going to do this. So there's global implications also. When you have some of these bigger pension funds realize we need Bitcoin in our portfolio. So, you know, it's it's much more likely that you'd be talking about one to three percent of twenty five to forty eight trillion dollars. Um, and that's just in pension assets alone. And 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 the C the, guess what the CIO on the show said? He said, when we decide as a pension fund to allocate to something because it has value, we do not care about the price. They do. It, it, they don't operate like the individual person where they go, "Well, B Bitcoin's at seventy or 80. No, no. They say we need this asset. We're getting in. Allocate the money. They don't look at the price. So yeah. that that doesn't like it doesn't matter if Bitcoin's at sixty or one hundred and twenty k per per Bitcoin. When they decide to allocate, they're allocating, and that will lead dominoes to others, and and those dominoes will continue to fall. That's why again. We're not even in the first inning of this ball game for institutions. The exciting thing for that too is if you consider, like, I think we're at what the the greatest historical amount of Bitcoin that hasn't moved. That's like illiquid. Like you start mixing that with some of the price appreciation and how much of like it was what during the COVID crash, eighty five percent held and didn't sell. Yeah, like. That that gets pretty fun as far as like we don't really do like you know price speculation, but it get the the track or like the direction starts to get fun to think about. The, yeah, he he mentioned that. Uh, Jordan, go ahead, bro. Sorry, I didn't. Well, I I mean, you guys are like <laughs> kind of blowing my mind right here that I have to like I gotta get a sanity check, and I was literally like messaging with a normie financial dude to get like his opinion on some things. Cause I was like, there's just no way. Like if, if what every, this whole conversation is about how like just a frat, we're just scratching the surface on how much like financial institution, institutional money is like going to come into this. If all, if all of this is true, like we're at, so, we're so undervalued right now. And that is exactly what, like to put it in other words, what Dom just said is like, they understand where the price is going. That's why they don't care where the price is. Do you understand how like mind blowing that is to they're like, we just need to own this thing because we know in 10 years that the price is only going to be higher and only going to be for it. It's not even the price. It's like the asset that you want to own because everything is about to be priced in this thing. Yeah. And in, in, in other terms, if they're on a ship that may sink or may not, you don't care how much the life raft costs. If you decide you need it on the, on the, you know what I mean? You're, you're like, yeah. is it 10,000? Is it a million? I don't care. Just make sure we have enough for the people so that we can do that. And I don't think pensions are looking at Bitcoin like a life raft right now, but I got to tell you the way I'm looking at it is I see liabilities continuing to grow. I see pensions funded at a level below 80%, which isn't a problem in itself. So, so much an emergency, until things get a little bit tougher and liabilities never stop. That train runs. So if you're printing money, you need to pay people more. 
the liabilities become higher. You need to have better returns. If, if, if you know the rate environment changes and you can't earn returns in other ways, you have to find a way. We all know, you know, that Bitcoin's one of its greatest properties is the scarcity side of it. So that gives it an indefinite time where it's going to serve its purpose. And because we're so early, it will be able, it will be the only horse in the race that can help keep up with those liabilities. So I see it as a lifeboat for them. I don't think they see it yet, but that's okay because all they really need to do is see it as having value to their portfolio. And then it'll prove itself within the portfolio when they, you know, 10 years go by and they go, did you see our returns from Bitcoin in 10 years? It saved our fund next door. They didn't add Bitcoin. Oh yeah. Mike's in that next door pension. Let's make him retire when he's 65. And Mike goes, no, no, no. <laughs> I saw what they did next door with Bitcoin. I'm not retiring when I'm 64. I'm going to push back. Uh, no way. Like these are the things that are going to play out with Bitcoin. And, um, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to add it. Um, I don't see, like the CIO said, I can't see, like, like people are at risk. If you're, if you're a pension fund in 10 years, that has no allocation to Bitcoin. I'm, I'm worried for you. Yeah, it's interesting to think about the the implications on on talent flow, where people are going to be going to 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 start their careers and to spend their careers, and it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, the the industries and organizations that are moving in this direction, they're going to start attracting people that are looking for security in their careers, and then the other ones who are not, they're going to lose out, and it'll be fascinating to see that shift, um, and how that's going to happen, um. Hey, before you, before you move from that, Gabe, that that brings up such a good point. And, you know, um, a good buddy of ours, Wade, who's up in Alaska, imagine yeah. how hard it is to to attra attract um, workforce talent to come, you know, tough out the winters in Alaska and, and deal with some of that, you know, some of those challenges, something like Bitcoin. And this kind of ties into I know we've talked about. How do you use Bitcoin to incentivize military personnel? The promise of what it can do for you allows you to take a smaller amount and incent and create a greater incentive. And, you know, if I told you, hey, you know, I'm going to I'm going to set aside this fund for you fifty dollars a month versus fifty dollars in Bitcoin. You might look at that fifty dollars of Bitcoin and go, you know what? Number one, it holds more value, so it's going to be worth more than what I'm getting right now. And number two, I like the way this organization is looking to the future. This is a future-facing organization that I want to be a part of. Yes, I'll go tough out the Alaska winter. Sign me up. I love the values and what this place stands for. And I know Wade. Um, he gave me my first shot at speaking ever at a conference. I was there with Alex, and uh, and uh, he's doing great work up there for sure. Oh hell yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, to your point, Dom, I mean, to see to see this happening in real time, to see, you know, a lot of people talk about Bitcoin being an IQ test. And for the people who are tired of being robbed uh, by the, the forces that are out there that have a monopoly on violence, to see these people gravitating towards those areas, time ticks on, you're going to see this massive flow from this fiat workforce that you know where these people are completely undervalued underappreciated told to sit down shut up take shots cover up your mouth stand six feet apart all the you know the the i don't know the status starter pack bullshit um to these places i mean this is this is galt's gulch man i mean this is where everybody is going to be headed and boy, i'll tell you what reputation is going to follow you if you can get in the door so obviously be very aware of that when you're in this space. Uh, first and foremost, Bitcoin breeds positive incentive structure. And one of those positive incentive structures is going to be your reputation. So take care of that because if you want to be in this space, you're going to have to know some people and those people are going to have to vouch for you. That's that's what this is all about. It's going to breed a better culture in general. That's what Bitcoin does. From from I have a question for y'all. What do you, you know, from a branch of the military perspective, I looked up some stats and I saw that the two branches of the military that hit their recruiting goals for 2023 were the Marine Corps and the Space Force. Um, the rest fell short. Um, but how, how do y'all see if there were to be a branch, and I don't know if this is allowed and how, because maybe there's one decision maker for all the branches, but, but, if, but if a branch, we see things that are happening. You got UFC fighters talking about the importance of money, right? Like what would it do for a branch of the military if they embraced Bitcoin 
used it in some capacity to you know sock aside a retirement and really just embrace the values of it you know how do you guys see that impacting that branch and people's desire to work for a, sp a specific branch of the military I don't, I don't know if it could be done specifically in any branch, but I will tell you, I think there's some very fertile ground there, Dom, uh, where you're talking about some of the organizations that are stood up just outside to take care of maybe, you know, the the fallen families and things like that. I know, uh, you know, plenty of Marine Corps special operations, Raiders, uh, reconnaissance type of foundations out there. I'm sure there's a, you know, a fifth group or seventh group or things like that for some of the special operations guys in, in the army and, and so forth for everybody out there. I think that would be one of those amazing fertile grounds where you have a bunch of long beards, you know, talking, you know, some sense to maybe some of the, you know, the, the younger guys, right? Because a lot of those interactions are unfortunately tragic first and foremost because of the circumstance, but uh, to have those guys be able to mentor these people and these families as they're probably transitioning through one of the hardest places in their entire lives, that would be a, an amazing place to start uh, some of these, you know, outreaches to those organizations for sure. I think, uh, so, sorry, Alex, go ahead, man. Uh, let me just jump in here real quick and say that, like, if you're if you're a guy in the military right now and you're you're trying to figure out this whole Bitcoin thing, I'm I'm gonna say study it and and get to the level of conviction where it's like, if what you do is cut back on your expenses, increase the delta between what you're earning and what you're spending, take all of that and th put it into Bitcoin and do that for as long as you can. That will impact you. You're not going to see it immediately. Wait four years, wait eight years, like, but it will it will change the destiny of your of your family and your kids and your grandkids. This is, I mean, that's a big statement. Trust me on that. Just start doing the research. You're gonna figure this out. And um, it is the most powerful thing you will ever do with your time in terms of leveraging your time. Uh, the next thing I'm going to say is, is that like, I don't know if any branch of the military will ever embrace this because what will end up happening is, is that if, if soldiers, airmen, seamen, Marines start doing this, they're going to get to the point where they're going to become sovereign. Yeah. They won't charge that hill if they're sovereign, you know, on that suicide drive. And it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if, if a soldier, or airmen or whatever wins the lottery, generally speaking, they will be discharged from the military <laughs> because at that point they have what's called fuck you money. And when you have fuck you money, when, when they get told to do something that doesn't jive with them morally, spiritually, or what they know is right, they're just going to say, nah, I'm not going to do that. And you, you can't have, you can't have guys in the military doing that. So, uh, guys, just just do that thing, man. Create delta between your your earnings and your 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 expenditures. Put it in Bitcoin. Thank me in four years. Yeah, I was they, I was they, gonna I was gonna add um, that I echo the focusing on the individual and the families because um, if you think about it, like continuing off of Alex's point of like the individual winning the lottery, like the U S military, like at like, first off, they would, they kind of would be incentivized from Bitcoin's price appreciation, but they can rely on the money printer and all of the, um, lost funds that they've had since 2001, right. With Donald Rumsfeld, when he stated that 25% of the U S budget couldn't be accounted for. Like we're already to the point of where we're, we've missed what six or seven of the last audits and nobody's like correcting them. They've already got free money. Like they don't need, yeah. they don't really need to rely on price appreciation. And then those organizations are also the U S government, it, like in the banking system, wouldn't be incentivized to supporting them. If they got, if they put Bitcoin on their balance sheet and they started getting like, a, imagine an entire military branch that had fuck you money. That's a pending breakaway rogue nation. At that yeah, point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like Roman, that's Roman Legion type wow. shit right there. 
Yeah, yeah. 100%, man. 100%. I, my, my bet is the Marines, guys. I'm I, I'm not biased. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. like, if I, I actually agree with that. I actually yeah. agree with that. Like, the Marines are, like, the closest thing to a, a religious zealot organization a cult. of just straight-up <laughs> badass MFers. See, uh, like, the, yeah. the, See, the great... I was going to say, the, the crazy part, too, is if you... If you think about it, um, no, nah, I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> well, see, see, here's the thing. Like, you guys are saying the Marines. Okay, you got a, a Navy guy saying it and a Marine saying it. Like, okay, I, and maybe this is my own bias, but I just think there's a bunch of fucking dudes with a bunch of the green hats in the woods of out in the mountains, you know, just planning and plotting and building their networks, and they're just being quiet. Nobody even knows they're doing it. They're just manipulating a bunch of other monkeys to do some monkey stuff no, to help true. protect that dude. Four force multipliers. We're thankful for you, Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remembered. <laughs> I remembered the thing I wanted to mention. The thing that the, trying the, to buy funny, time, Mike. Yeah, sorry about that. The funny thing about like getting like this education out to like all these different military branches is all we have to do is make the education engaging and interesting. Because any financial briefing you get in the military is dog shit. Like, it is complete ass. Absolutely. And, like, it is so bad, dog boring, shit. and forever taking that you're just counting down the minutes until you can get a smoke break or just be done for the day. Yeah. It's not. The, the standard is so low. It's the okay, worst ever. Let, let, let's do this. Uh, we've been rolling here for a little bit. Dom, is there anything major you wanted to hit? Anything you wanted to cover? Like, what do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? Because after we do this little part, we've got the 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 ex, the super exciting part of the show. Nice. Yeah, I'll just say one thing on what you said, Alex. About um, you said you 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 were telling people take you know boost that amount of excess funds that they can afford to to save and invest and put into Bitcoin. And I'll just say this. The hardest thing for all of us as investors, especially if we come from working class families, is to resist the urge to change our own destiny and, and basically make a sacrifice for the next generation. And you touched on a little bit, Alex, because if you look at any major wealthy family, somewhere in that dynasty, someone went, you know what, I, I'm just a worker. I'm, I'm not going to be able to change my future, but I'll tell you what. I learned something very valuable about, you know, how to maintain my purchasing power and how to build wealth. I'm going to sacrifice and make sure I hold on to that and don't gamble that away. And then I'm going to give it to the next generation, complete with the knowledge. And this is at the core of any organization that wants to onboard Bitcoin. When I went to the, the firefighters and we were going to pull the trigger on taking a deeper step, you know, the first thing we did was to get off zero. We just invested a dollar per guy because that's how we overcame the emotional side of learning about something. A dollar per guy, no risk, just learn about it. We came back and then we added the whole Bitcoin. And before we did that, I said, listen, y'all have to have a moment right here where if you want to, if we're doing this to get rich, to, to basically try to retire early, to try to make a bunch of money and cash out, I'm going to vote. I'm, I'm the one who brought this forward. I will be the first to vote no and try to call every person I, I can to convince them not to do this. If we're going to do this because this is new, it's promising and is one of the greatest you know innovations of our time. And we want to have something for the next generation because part of our culture is leave it better than you found it. Then I'm a yes on this. I'm a hundred percent in. Because we can make a, a significant allocation that doesn't impact our destiny. But if this works the way we think it will, it will impact the next generation's destiny. And God knows what challenges a firefighter in 2050 is going to face. But God damn it, if they have a Bitcoin or some, some, something of incredible value, they'll look back and go, you know what? Thank, thanks to those guys for putting us in this position. And we all benefited from inheriting something that was in a good place because there's courageous people to make sacrifice before us. Bitcoin is the best way we can do that for the next generation. Hell yeah. Damn. God yeah. damn. Let's go, people. That was let me, one of the let me, best let me, things that's ever been said on this show. Yeah, and let me tell you something. This is this is this is where guys like you and and veterans, like we're all the same. Like in in my mind. The, the whole sheepdog mentality of where we're willing to sign the contract that says at some point we may die. 
protecting our fellow man. That's cool, right? But the whole idea of like, I'm gonna make this 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 part of my life. It's an act of service. Let's let's leave it better than we found it. Um, let's stand in the gap. Let's do something for our future generations. Like, look, maybe I worked my ass off in my whole life. Maybe I only got so far, but my kids, my grandkids are going to be better off. Brother, this is what I call getting on the mission. Like, this is what Bitcoin is all about. It's all about finding a way to get off that damn hamster wheel that you run on 20, all your damn life trying to chase the prices that are running away from you because of fiat corrupt monetary system. We finally have a way where we can invest our time and our energy and our labor in something that is going to grow in value over time. And it is absolutely life changing. This is the reason why you have so many guys who are veterans that are getting get involved in this thing because they're like, man, this makes a difference. Like I can actually make a difference. I can do it for my family. I can do it for my friends, my compatriots. Um, and it becomes a new purpose and a new mission. I I love it. Like um, you guys are absolute brothers to us and <laughs> you're, you're basically, as far as I'm concerned, you're one of us, man. So. I, I, I appreciate it. We have some, some of my favorite, you know, I went to El Salvador with a Marine and a Navy CB, two of my, my closest friends. Um, you know, what y'all do, I, I never served in the military, but, but to, to take that step and, you know, basically go, yo, I'm going to go into a battlefield, uh, into a war zone. And, you know, we've seen some crazy stuff, but nothing like that as firefighters. And, um, I have the highest respect for all military personnel. They're absolutely pivotal and, and critical to our country as are our first responders. And we're the same family. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of, uh, we got a lot of folks in our industry that used to be in military and there's a lot of fire medic and, and, you know, MPs in the, it's a, it's a clear transition. Now we know the history of the pension is damn near, you know, they were doing it's, it's, it's all one family. So, um, yeah, dude, this is a great place to be. And I mean, Gabe with that Georgia announcement and the stuff you guys are doing and, and the, the signal you guys are spreading here, we're going to, we're going to be good, dude. We're, we're going to help a lot of people find this and, and change the world by doing that, you know, one person at a time. So I, I'm pumped, dude. I'm bullish. Hell yeah. You know, you guys know what time it is. First, I got to give uh, Dom a little bit of credit here first in, in all firefighters. I've run into fucking buildings on fire. Um, no, thanks. That, that shit is that's for firefighters. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that is some scary ass shit. Uh, I will I will definitely say that. But uh, without further ado, I think everybody knows what Who time it is. Who the fuck said that? <laughs> what? What have we got here? A fucking comedian, <laughs> private joker. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of soundboards. Oh we my god, soundboards. we got soundboards. Oh, nice. Let's go. <laughs> it is fucking story time. Uh Dom, have they have they apprised oh, you boy. in the uh the pre-show of, of what story time is, huh? This was tough because it's I, I heard some stories and there's a lot of buildup. I kind of you know, I have multiple tiers of story. There's the public stories that we can tell. There's the semi-public, like I'm kind of far enough along where this is okay. Then there's the private stories and then the stories we won't tell until like <laughs> we're quite sure that, that <laughs> we can't be impacted. You know, that's like you got that 80, money 85 on. years old and you're like, let me tell you something about back in the day, my friend. <laughs> this is the first time this one came out. <laughs> um, uh, I just... Jump to one of those, man. Go ahead. I've elected. <laughs> I've elected to tell a handful of shorter stories. Um, we'll call these like some short stories that have to do with me being on probation as a firefighter and how ridiculous it was because I had no. You know, a lot of people become firefighters and they go to an academy, um, and they have some background. I got hired, never having ridden a fire engine once. I had no no background. So there's some funny stories that show my uh, lack of experience, but I was a good actor um, at the time, you know, so you all appreciate this one. Um, the first time when we got, we had to go pick our, get our equipment and the training captain goes, Hey Dom, go grab a brush jacket and then, you know, bring it here, uh, you know, a flak jacket. And I'm like, 
I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, all right. Um, and I start pretending. He's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And I'm like, oh, uh, he's like, that one over there. Now, if he would have just stopped me and go, hey, tell me what a brush jacket is, he would have been like, I would have been like, I have no, I have no idea. And he would have been like, thank you, you're fired. So that was one. <laughs> that same training captain, day one, um, there's a ladder out in the in the drill yard. And for those that don't know at home, you have to pass a four month academy and then you do a year of what they call probation where they can fire you at any time. And, and you know, you're getting sized up and you have to perform. So it's day one of the training tower. And I was always told by some people like, dude, you got to step up and volunteer. So he goes, who here can throw the ladder against this building? And I'm like, bam, I'm like, I can. Never having thrown the ladder. <laughs> now, for anyone that hasn't thrown, you know, a 90 pound wood ladder, there's a technique, dude, <laughs> but I did not have this technique. So I come up to this ladder and you're supposed to put it on its side, hoist it up and put your arm through the rungs. I grabbed the two, basically the rails of this wooden ladder. And I like put it up here. I'm like, oh, I get it over the head. <laughs> and I'm walking with this ladder and this training captain's mouth is on the floor and I just jam it into this building and I, I take it out and he's just looking flabbergasted and he goes, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I'm like, sir, you said throw the ladder against the building. I did it. And he goes, get the fuck back in the line. He's like, who here is actually throwing a ladder before? <laughs> well, you I laid really well in the army, Dom. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, awesome. shit. <laughs> Later, I found out that he was like, hey, you see that motherfucker throw that ladder? He had no idea. You know, like, I guess he was pumped on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other than that, I mean, those are two quick stories. I have a bunch of other from when I was on probation. I mean, I almost fell off of a four-story uh, tower when I was doing um, rope repelling because there was slack in my line on the roof and like 20 guys there. Yes. So I, I go off the edge and I'm like, he's gone. Like he, <laughs> I felt, I felt, now Don't I had that, about gravity. I had that death grip on that rope. I mean, you there's you, like you you think self custody can't be confiscated? Like that rope was not coming. I was getting buried in the rope. Well, the rope will be buried with me. So then I drop it. Boom! I, I catch either the the rescue belay caught or I caught it. For the story, I'm always going to say I caught it. <laughs> I come down. I go back up. That same training captain. He goes, "We thought you. We thought you lost you." And I go, "Hey, sir." does this disqualify me as the guy who gets to repel at the graduation ceremony? He's like, yes, it fucking does. You will not be that guy. And I was like, but it wasn't my fault. So um, my, my probation is endless stories. Uh, I had some, I have some good stories how I used to mess with, uh, there was a Marine who used to, he, he rode me hard and I got him back on a couple Whoa, of stories. Phrasing. Yeah. Phrasing. I mean, he, he was looking out for my best interest by, by, uh, pushing me to the, to the limits. And actually he, he did a great he job. But... Dominating you. Uh, <laughs> oh. Let's get I'll, the story on the first name now. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I got him back. And he was a great dude that, that actually was pivotal to my success. Um, we used to have one of those, you know how when you're a junior, the junior guy, you can't, you can't fuck with people. The only way you can fuck with people is by doing your job in a way where you can mess with them, but they can't go, were you messing with them? No, sir. <laughs> so we used to have this water, like one of those five gallon water jugs in the kitchen. <laughs> and, and it was the junior guy's responsibility to make sure that got filled. And if the senior guy had to fill that, you were going to hear about it, right? So this guy, he was a Marine. He was always riding the junior guys. So I did a little prank one time. I took a full water jug and I hid it under the table. And then when the water jug was empty, there was the, we kept the extra ones outside. So I'm the junior guy. I'm supposed to be working nonstop. And when he's coming in, I make sure that I'm talking to someone pretending to talk about the weekend. Right. So, I'm, you know, he comes in and, and I'm in the kitchen and I'm talking to him, yeah, well, what are you doing this weekend? And I can see him out of the corner of my eye. Look, look at the empty water jug. Look at me like this rookie dude, worthless. Shake his head. He goes out to get the water jug. I run, dude, and get the one from under the table. Put it in. I go back to where I'm talking. He comes with the full one. I'm like, sir, what are you doing? And he goes, well, someone has to replace the damn water jug because the rookie's worthless. And I go, are you okay, dude? And he looks. And he's like, you idiot. And I go, I don't understand what you're talking, sir. Like the, the water is in there. We don't need water. 
and he just storms out pissed off. But that was the only way I could fuck with people because you know you I'd have to do dumb stuff like that and and, and, and so, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, those That's those hilarious. are a couple of my stories from probation. So those things work though. Like it, those, like when you do that, when you catch somebody like that, because I was rookie in like the plumbers and pipe fitters union and stuff. Like you do stuff like that, and then they they back off of you for quite a long time or indefinitely because they're like, "All right, cool, he's I like he can lay a trap for me now." Like I I, I don't know what what I'm gonna do with this. Exactly. Same guy one time came to back the ambulance at dusk. It wasn't night; it was dusk. You could see fine, and he goes, "Don't ever back me up without a flashlight again." And I go, "Sorry, sir." <laughs> So the next time the ambulance goes out, I take every piece of lighting equipment we have on the truck. We had a bunch of 500 watt, 1000 watt lights and I set up <laughs> stadium lighting, dude, for where the thing backs up. But I tell my probationary partner, I go, don't plug this in until I point at you. And he goes, okay. <laughs> Here comes the ambulance. And I run out with no flashlight, and he looks, and he's so fucking pissed. You can see he looks. He's like, where's the flashlight? Like, shaking his head. And then as he goes to back up, I'm like, now. <laughs> Boom. Dude, you would have thought it was a prison break. It's so light. <laughs> he backs up, and he goes, you idiot. And I go, sir, I want to make sure it's well lit for you. I know, you know, it's, it's getting a little dark. And like you said, Mike, like, I mean, they, they can't. What are they going to say? Like, Oh, he set up all the lights. I'll just say we were training. We thought it was a good training exercise to, you know, we're learning our crap. Um, so, yeah. oh, God. That's fantastic. I think we should start a new, tra uh, a new tradition <sighs> on, on Bitcoin veterans podcast. And that is after story time, we all give a thumbs up or a thumbs down determining how good these damn stories were. And as far as Dom oh, Bay is concerned, man absolutely uh, you yeah, won't do it for so me it, 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 it helps it helps Shit. when you have like four stories just ready to go like a fucking machine gun like yeah <laughs> you, you, you don't like that one here's another one here's another one <laughs> <laughs> nice and strategy the, the sad thing is i pro i got so many so at the citadel i'll share some more <laughs> um of uh, just ridiculous stories for sure Hell yeah. We we'll we need up. to we need to change story time to like the smoke like smoke smoke pit. Pit stories and the, like we what we need at the citadel is we need a smoke pit we need to like a place to go we're like yo dom's gonna be at the smoke pit in 10 minutes like you're gonna want to go there to just hear his stories and <laughs> Dude, that's all you're okay. allowed to talk about at the smoke pit is like story time yeah so people who aren't familiar with what we're doing at um at at uh nashville 2024 we're gonna have a bitcoin veteran citadel it's a breakout room we're gonna have a stage we're going to have uh, educational sessions. We're going to have Start9 Labs there. They're going to be doing like a, a breakout on how to use Start9. We're going to be doing ham radio qualifications, mesh-tastic demonstrations, how to surveil yourself on the on-chain, all these different kinds of things. Maybe what we do is we do we pick a segment of time. Gary, are you listening? Obi, are you listening? Where what we do is story time. And we we just like riff, man. We need to set aside an hour. Let anybody from from our group or or first responders, you want to come up, tell a story. Uh, it, it'll be absolutely hilarious. Kind of like karaoke, but with story time. I love it. I, so many I, good I, ones, dude. I, I love it. I think that's that's gold. Um, so, but D Dom, you can't. Which reminds me of another story. No. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you can't dominate the entire space either. No, <laughs> no, no. No, go for it. If you, Those... if you have material, go for it. Yeah, oh yeah, those are good ones. That was I'm saving some. I'll save yeah. some. That was uh I'll make sure I only bring a couple, but dude, there's a lot. Dude, there's a lot. <laughs> I know this good is night. uh this is our podcast and we have all the time in the world, but uh people have lives out there and uh they need to get to those. Um guys, you wanna throw it around real quick? Any any parting thoughts? I will say, Dom, uh when I first interacted with you on Spaces, we were talking about all this stuff. I had no idea that we would be getting up to this point. So I'm, I'm glad you're here with us, man. I appreciate it. When I first got into like some of these Twitter space, Bitcoin spaces, um, I got into a few of them and it, and it seemed like Dom was always in them. And so to get the chance to like sit down and talk with you, like, like my Bitcoin journey has come to the point to where now like you and I are talking on a show together and trying to be on the show, trying to work on things behind the scenes to help push this movement and like better humanity 
And uh, it's just, it's an absolute privilege to be on here talking with you, man. I, I can't wait to meet you in person in Nashville. Yeah. And I, and I want to say, man, um, the, the first time that I, I mean, when I was just starting to get involved in this, man, and I was listening to you talk on um, Spaces, um, Cafe Bitcoin one day, and and you you said something that stuck with me, man, and it hit, and it hit me then, and it still resonates with me now. And you said that it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you got going on. There's a place for you to get involved in Bitcoin. Bring what you got. Show up and bring what you got and you will make a difference. And it just it stuck with me, man. And and I appreciate you saying that because it it, it motivated me, man. And it inspired me and it, it made a difference. And I'm and I'm betting that it makes a difference with other people, too. And so you're making it happen, man. And I appreciate that. And it's awesome to be on this mission with you. My man, Shane, right. Alex, come on, man. Don't leave yeah, me hanging. Okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> hey, it, come on. Man. Keep it going. Keep it I going. Just, I, just, I just want to say thanks for being here now. Like you're, uh, you know. What? Yeah. Like the time that I've, <laughs> I'm not done yet. Jesus, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just super glad to know you, man. Like you're one of these guys that are, you're out there doing things, proof of work, making things work. And, uh, I'm just very excited for the future. And I'm, uh, I know that there's a ton of pensions and, and unions out there that you're going to make a big impact on. You're already doing it. There's already a handful that have already, uh, decided to put Bitcoin in the portfolio based upon what you've taught them. And, uh, I think this is obviously just the beginning and I'm super excited for the future with you, man. Dom, uh, tell everybody how we can help you, man. How, what's the best way? Well, first off, I want to pile on this and say thank you guys, first and foremost, for ser your service. Um, we can't thank you all enough. And I mean it. And I know it's just like something that people say, but like, I thank you all for signing up for the military. I thank you guys for putting yourselves out on the line so that we could enjoy freedom on the home front so that I could work this cool job as a firefighter. Uh, I'm forever grateful. And so is my organization of all the firefighters forever grateful. Trust me on that. That's, that's for sure. Um, super, you know, inspired by the work y'all are doing. And um, I think it's really important stuff. There's tons of intersections. So I'm excited to work with y'all on any initiative. The workforce is, you know, the front line of the home front. Militaries are front line of both the home front and overseas. They, 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 they work together and they feed off of each other. Um, for my work, anyone listening, the best thing you can do is help me get the word out to other organizations that we exist because a lot of them don't know that we're a nonprofit that provides education based Bitcoin adoption at zero cost. I have no product to sell. There's no pitch at the end of it. All I want to do is see workers just like y'all want to see military. I want to see the people that need Bitcoin the most benefit and find it as soon as possible. So if anyone listening, we're Workforce BTC on Twitter, uh, www.proofofworkforce.org on our website. Anything you can do to um, you know, support our work and get the word out is the best thing you can do. We'll talk to any organization, union, worker, we don't need to be the ones to present. We'll help you present. We just want to see you succeed and uh, appreciate the support that everyone's given so far, man, for sure. Especially from y'all. Alex has given me like, I remember him let me on Cafe Bitcoin when I was just a chatty Kathy, you know, that didn't know shit. Um, and I still am a chatty Kathy that don't know much. Um, but, but you you're know, cute. You're yeah. cute, chatty Kathy. Hey, you know, I, I try to, I try to just like, uh, I'm trying to enjoy the end of my youth uh, as I, as I push forward into the later years and Shane and, and Mike and Gabe and Jordan, and Alex, all the work that y'all did again, we just build off that next block. So I've been a fan of a lot of the stuff y'all have been doing and, and um, yeah, man, it's good. we just keep the train going. Dom, first of all, thanks for coming, my man. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Been hanging out with you all uh, this past weekend, too. Was, uh, it was really good to get to know you even better. Um, all his links, guys, are going to be in the show notes out there. Uh, you, you've said some pretty inspiring stuff tonight, and I, I, I'm excited. I, to, to, uh, 
to not think about, you know, some spaces or not to have been exposed to some spaces like unions that are across this country and, and around the world to see how that's going to benefit everybody. And there's already people like you working in this space. Unbelievable. And, and there's so much more to do uh, and, and to accomplish and to see, you know, to watch you do this, I think uh, is going to be something pretty inspirational. I look forward to having you back on the show, you know, at some point to kind of talk about some more of those wins uh, and, and, and what else you're finding out there. But uh, for everybody else out there, um, go follow Dom, uh, keep up with him, support him however you possibly can. Uh, that's what is going to make this uh, this network grow. It's just that, you know, th that network effect and plugging everybody in and supporting each other. That's what this has got to be. You know, these guys are they're giving everything they got and then some. They're spending time away from their families, their friends. They, 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 are, they are literally sacrificing their most valuable asset, their time, to go out and make this Bitcoin mission happen. It's incredible. So, Dom, uh, from all of us here at Bitcoin Veterans, Thank you so much. If you're out there and you want to be part of this amazing network, you don't have to be a veteran. You don't even have to be veteran adjacent. You can be anybody. Uh, come in, get a hold of us. Uh, you can find it at uh, bitcoinveterans.org. Uh, you can sign up. We will throw you into the chats and whatever you think you might want to do, we are going to try to empower you to the best of your ability to put you back on that mission. Freedom, liberty, America, and all that other stuff out there. Okay. Uh, on top of some... <laughs> <laughs> on top of some amazing, uh, amazing work from amazing uh, men and women that uh, have done so much in the past and still want to serve. Unbelievable to be a part of this, guys. Uh, thank you uh, to everybody. Dom for coming. Gabe, Alex, Jordan, Mike. Uh, thank you, guys. Everybody who's out there. Obi, especially for this performance out at BitBlock Boom, bringing in the merch. Um, you know, everybody that's putting together all the, the stuff behind the scenes for uh, for Nashville, for Pacific Bitcoin, for the training that we're going to do. You guys are absolutely crushing it. Keep it up. Um, we are we are just getting started. 41 uh, shows in, a little over 41 weeks. We haven't even been at this a year. So get ready. We'll see you guys next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. 6 p.m.? 6. I, I, 7, whatever it is. Games lavish, whatever. right? 6 p.m. Wednesday, that, Eastern that time. May, that's, that's May 8th, though. Right, that's me. Who's the guest next week? And and one more thing for y'all, <laughs> I'm going to Belize, so just have that extraction team ready for me. I'll call Hobart and I'll just go Hobart at send yeah. it, and I'll go. Got boys, we're going to Belize to get Dom out. Okay, <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> we're we're the Blackhawks. That's it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>